19 Nocturne Boulevard. Nocturne Boulevard? Not far. When you hit Howard, hang a right. Howard meets Philip at a weird kind of angle. Then you cross James and Paul. You can't miss Nocturne. It's just past the automatic. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Your address for suspenseful stories of the speculative, strange, and supernatural. Tonight's story is Bride of the Minotaur. Yes, this is 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Won't you step inside? Did you have any trouble finding it? What do you mean, what kind of a place is it? Why, it's a cobblestone street, somewhere in the London of Queen Victoria. Can't you tell? fortunate you happened by, and I was able to offer you shelter. What do you want, then? Now, you might be able to assist me, if you'd be so kind. I ain't taking off my bloomers. Oh, nothing of the sort, I assure you. You see, this is the backstage area of a small theatre, and we are in need of an actress. Well, ain't that lucky. Have you ever considered acting? <laughs> nah. Me, strutting around like some mad woman. Go on. Oh, much less complicated than that. We just need a female person like yourself to stand on stage and repeat some lines in one scene. And our actress was unwell tonight. What kind of a show is it, then? Something rather romantic. A wedding. The concept of marriage in most underdeveloped countries is merely one step, sometimes only a half step, from the selling of slaves in the open marketplace. Women are bartered for goods, granted in marriage to seal trading agreements, and sold to the highest bidder. Often, they arrive at their weddings never having seen the groom, let alone any other male not in their immediate family. I truly don't know how you do it. I take no credit, dear Freddy. He calls them to himself. No wonder the ceremony always goes so splendidly. Ah, of course. He gets what he wants, and we get what we want. Did you bring the token? Oh, yes. Dear Cousin Reginald will never know what hit him. <laughs> to the Honourable Frederick Hazelton from the firm of Shipley and Shipley Solicitors. In accordance with your grandfather's will, you will be awarded £100 per annum, beginning the 1st of January, 1889. It ain't safe. You need to get away from here. What's that? Why? I quite fancy myself as a blushing bride. She don't know these people. I've been here, well, a while. I swear by God's farmers are a pack of murderers and fiends. Bad as all that. None of their actresses never come back for another night. Ever. How do they keep putting on a show then? They only do it once a month. On the dark of the moon. And somehow some girl always shows up for the role. Some get brought in and some just arrive. Right at the last minute. Just like you. Go on. Don't sound so superior, my girl. If it didn't get someone, they'd probably just put me on stage. And Lord knows I live in terror of that day. But you'd still warn me off. Of course. What'd you take me for, an even? Why don't you just run off? Simple. Bad case of the Spanish mind. I see. White slavery is the appalling traffic in English women and children. Scores of girls are snatched out from under our very noses to be sold overseas into shameful circumstances, never again to see a good, clean English face. Why so nervous? My first time, you know. Don't worry. We've been at this long enough to know how to deal with any exigency. But what if I can't... Go through with it. You will do splendidly. After all, these girls have no 
real value to society, and he enjoys them so very much. And so many of our jaded fellows love a good grisly spectacle. Everyone gets what they want. Except the girl. These gutter snipes are barely human. How can their wishes matter in the least? People would gather in the Place de la Revolution to watch the beheadings. Many claimed that heads would twitch, respond to questions, and even try to speak for several seconds after being severed from the body. Almost. And... Ah, there. <gasps> what the devil? You're dead right. That is a carbuncle. I know, a calming mum had them. Now, if it were Bonyan, you'd be stuck on Queer Street. Then things don't never go. But, oh, sorry, sir. You need something. Why aren't you dressed? Why? I am dressed. What do you think I am? I meant dressed in your costume for the play. This time yet, ain't there? I ain't never put on nothing like this before. I probably won't again. I brought you something. Oh? Helps with the stage, right? Ta! You're not going to drink that, are you? And why not? I like a nip now and again. It might be poison or drugged. Or gin. Drug gin, then? <laughs> so you don't want any, then? <laughs> Sides. You can shove now any time you want. Oh, I owe you. Nah. And I've got nowhere else to go. Gah. No parents, no bloke. Been here too long. <sighs> Tell you what. Survive the night, then there's this place I know. Many wills include a grace period following the death of the testator, only after which may survivors inherit their full share. This, of course, is to allow the family to avoid being struck with death duties twice in a very short period. It was particularly important during times of plague, and other similar large-scale deaths, where it was not uncommon for an entire household... Done. Would you kindly explain now why we're coddling this drab? The drug in the bottle will make her docile. Help her to accept her fate. What if she doesn't drink? They always drink. They can't help themselves. It's in their blood. I find I'm still a little nervous. So many things can go wrong. Nothing will go wrong, my good fellow. And Reginald? Will be dead by morning. That is the reward for your loyalty. My loyalty? Of course. After tonight, you will be sealed and covenanted as one of us. We enjoy all the richest things in life, and none can stand in our way. But I thought it was just this. I suggest you put aside your doubts now, boy. You already know too much to step aside from your place upon our path. It would be all too easy to replace this token of your cousin Reginald with this token from you. Sympathetic magic is a very primal and logical force on both the physical and psychical planes. By taking ownership of a piece of another, you have a tie to bring you together, a link to his or her essence. Just as a person's garments, no matter how old, still smell of him to a bloodhound, so too, mystically, do a person's artifacts Resonate on an ethereal plane with the original they generate from. I still says you're a nutter. Well, you're staying too. But I ain't afraid of nothing. It's a fact. Never have been, never will be. How's that? I was born on a witching moon. Some of ground used to say. Fearless or not, you could still get yourself killed. Best way for you to help me now is tell me what all goes on on stage. 
Maybe we can change the ending of this panto. Well, it happens about once a month. They find a girl in desperate straits, you see, and bring her here. Promise her anything she wants. Dress her in a gown. Same gown? Funny you should ask, but it is always different. But each one gets ruined, then. Eh? We're not to take that bet. So, different girl, different dress. Same bloke bring her in. No, different each time. Sometimes they even get indecent backstage here. Oh, she's dressing? God. Sometimes before, sometimes after. Some of them likes a gown. Bloody toffs. Just don't have no respect for the sanctity of marriage. <laughs> so, the bride goes out on the stage. And that's the last you see of the poor girl. Aye, but I is it. What? Hold on. Shh. Oh, yes, sir? Just came to see the new bride. Well, aren't you a pretty one? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Oh, I do love a properly docile cow. Give us a kiss, love. She ain't yours. Are you talking to me? <gasps> oh, sorry, sir. Sorry, but the gentleman I brought her, uh, he, he said he'd be back shortly, and I won't be happy if he finds you. Uh, you. You do not <gasps> speak to me. I, me, ma. Huh? What, what are you doing? S stop! I think it's time you saw the show, little mouse. Perhaps we should keep this girl as a dresser and make you the star. Please, sir, only he paid me, sir, to keep her for him, you see. He's you? <laughs> I suppose I'll have to teach this fellow how things work around here. <laughs> yes, that should be entertaining. Watch out, little mouse. Or I will see that you lose your chains. <sighs> and, hmm? How much did that idiot give her? He prefers them awake. Is he gone? Yes. He's on real well. It's the truth. Nice like that. I swear, I thought you were going to pull every Trafalgar in me, Perry. You need to leave. <laughs> now. What, you, you ain't all logy then? <laughs> nah. That ain't nothing. I can drink ten of that. It'll still keep I, me powder dry. I was thinking I might leave during the show when they're all looking other way. Right now, he's still out there. Do that. Merciful God, they're coming for you. Jane! That address I gave you. You go right there and give them this. They'll find you a place in the scullery or, or something. But why? Best not to ask. Oh! Let them in. Just as some have a higher or lower tolerance for alcohol, or a greater or lesser reaction to opiates, so too do people vary widely in their susceptibility to suggestion and the power of mesmerism. This needn't be commensurate with character, for sometimes it is the weakest willed who cannot satisfactorily be put into a trance state, while one of very strong personal force may go under with the most trifling attempt. Shouldn't we be uh, processioning with the rest of the... Of your fellows? Our fellows, my dear chap. Remember, you're one of us now. And forever. Of course. Of course. We will make our way to the stage in a moment. There is still plenty of time before the uh, finale. Time to finish this excellent brandy. Mmm. Mm. You really can't rush the finer things, my friend. Please forgive my impatience. I can't wait to see him. Or is it an it? If he was an it, we wouldn't have to find him so many pretty girls. It's a good thing he's not holding out for virgins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be uh, problematical. We'd have to grow them somewhere on a farm. <laughs> Staffed by nuns. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? Fraternal orders often involve a series of interwoven rites of passage, like layers of an onion. 
Regardless of how ludicrous the trials and how trivial the oath sworn in early stages, each successive trial and its associated swearing ties the postulant more and more tightly to the group. Involving the applicant in some sort of illegal act is a classic gambit. Once he has committed a crime for them, he can never turn his back on his brethren, at least not without a threat of exposure. For tonight, we bring to you your bride. She will give herself to you completely. Not much of an audience, is there? Shh! You don't speak. For every life must have its purpose. And the purpose of our life is to rule, to govern, and to revel in our power. I say of a... Shh! Oh, I'm Latin neither. What else is there? Shh! Oh, oh, Jewish! Stay quiet! Stop it! Or think out loud. Don't think. With power comes responsibility, and with power also comes the price. Present the bride. Is this where I talk? No, think not. Just walk. That's right, up to the hierophant. Now curtsy like a good girl. Ow. Now back away. Oh, like from the queen, eh? Ow. Ow. Jane, come along to Waterford Street at 10 p.m. tonight. I found where those girls have been going. If you see me, don't let on. I have secured a position on the inside. These fiends must be stopped. Hmm? This had better be good. Pardon me, sire, but the bride, she's unmanageable. Really? Is she fighting you? No, sire, but she won't. She just keeps talking. How much of a dose did you give her, Frederick? What your man brought. How odd. Odd indeed. But not unheard of. Let us go down and see what needs to be done. For those who walk the path of night will never the suffering decades see, but rather turn away their sight from wretches such as thee and me. You're rather amusing. Huh? Oh, it's the cold piece. Uh, and you're the bride. You still have a quarter hour before your final vows. How about a bit of cockoldry? You think with your trousers, don't ya? I like getting in one last shot. So you say. Ow! Oh! What? Bloody! Come on! Let's off! You ninny! What? You can't say you was enjoying that. Damn it, I have me reasons. But you need to shake a leg. I won't leave you. You ain't even met me proper like. I don't care, you me ups. You're a nutter. No wonder. Two peas we are. Ugh. Well, this is all right. Bloody hell you've gone and put me into. Why? What are you doing? Making sure he ain't dead. Jerry. Well, he's breathing. Guess I'll be safe here for a bit. You clocked him a good one. Um... Sorry? You says you will to help me. Come what may. On me oath, anything. Even if you might end up toes up. Oh, I've been locked up here for so long, death will be an holiday. Here's what I need. It is well known that among those who not only believe in, but actually practice so-called black magic, much of what goes on in a sitting, a ritual, if you will, is not so much a necessary part of the spell but rather to put the participants into the proper frame of mind. I am of the belief that any form of magic is predominantly focused thought, rather than chicken bones and bloody sacrifices. Faith is ever the key ingredient. So I locked her in the proper room, sire. She sounds amusing. Uh, Frederick? She sounds like the type to make trouble. Let her talk. She will not escape her fate through talking. He listens to none but me. But the audience, they may get a... a, a I don't they know They will enjoy her demise all the more if she irritates them half as much as she irritates you, Paige. Sire, my apologies. I spoke out of turn. Tut, tut. I will administer a penance later. Take the clay from an unhallowed grave With ye blood of an unborn and unbaptized male child to moisten Form the bones of stout hemlock rods, sinews Sleep tight, Jerry Come on Oh, steady on 
Is this my big scene? Come along. Ow! Now you need to pinch. And comes the bride. Woman made new, granted virtue. <laughs> Go on. Ow! Box your ears for that. Bring forth the bride. The gift. I can walk. Step behind the curtain and join your groom. I don't see him. The statue. The bullhead. That is enough. We have tolerated your insolence thus far, but now you will be silent. I never said... It may not compliment your gown, but gagged you will remain until the final scene. Gracious. Dick, I see you cornered the bulk of Grandpapa's estate. Quite a blow, really. Thought the old boy was fonder of me than that. <laughs> Hope you will be charitable. That is For one you're not, we a bishop bloke. He's a decker away. You, you can do it, Annie, I for Jane. Said... <gasps> she said, wait till I speak the words. <laughs> then, oh, oh, oh give me strength. <laughs> Gracious. Life is interconnected by paths of light. This light joins all things and all people, making us all as one in the eyes of the great beyond. Oh, bloody hell! Ah! What the devil happened anyway? Brilliant. Damn! Oh. Head injuries may result in many different symptom sets. What we think of as concussion may manifest itself through such different concerns as blurred vision, the obvious headaches, and loss of balance or equilibrium. Extreme cases may go on to experience delusions, oral hallucinations, and even eventual death. And now we, the great lords of the world, Creators and binders, mandators and minders have come together to bring this gift, this bride to the Great One, the Groom, the Minotaur, the Great One who will awaken shortly and take his prize and bless us with his grace and power. The momentous incident that grants life to the unliving and brings the great power we seek. The main contradiction within such faith-based magic is that many do not realize the essential nature of what they are practicing. Rather, they become caught up in the trappings, uh, focusing on the correct words and mystical gestures, the precise ingredients and the astrologically significant times. It is this very distraction which is their undoing. And now he won't stop moving! Damn! Oi, you! Jane? Don't try and stop me, you filthy bunklers, you! Let me out! So you can join them with watching her die? Bollocks to that! Who is this? Me or you? Who are you? Never you mind! Now be quiet so I can aim! She gave you my gun! Mad woman! You're lucky she wouldn't let me shoot you! Keep you from troubling us! I don't suppose she mentioned who I am! Part of the lasting appeal of such characters as the Count of Monte Cristo is the confusion that the very nature of disguise must cause. But simple as it is in fiction to fool one's close companions, it is much more difficult in practice. Let me out. Bollocks! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! For oft is evil garbed in a cloud of light, bedazzle those whom he would charm to sin. While others, plain and humble to our sight, may open gates to grace and guide us in. <laughs> Bloody hell! What the devil? Finish the sacrifice! In the wings! Oh yeah? Oh, 
Mother of God. Aye, mighty and terrible is the name of our God. Cry, cry for his mercy. It won't work no more. A shovel me. I can fix it. Oh. Where is she? Jane? Oh, damn it! Give me the gun! Shoot the foul thing before it gets her! Draw the four winds, spread the salt, and guard thyself as he may. He is the destroyer, the ender of all petty life, and laughs at your war. <laughs> hell! creations of magic, and perhaps someday of science as well, are less to be feared than their masters. A powerful as such a creature may be, it is merely a soldier obeying commands. Hey, Sire, we should away. This cannot help but attract attention. I really? Kind of I command you, my servant, kill everyone. Sire! Hard cheese, old man. Can't have this getting about, eh? I have served you for 20 years! How can you... Violence is inherent in humankind. It must be so. For even an infant who has never witnessed a violent act will strike out mercilessly when thwarted in its desires. You all right? Ah. She's coming back though. We gotta fly. Nah, it won't stop till it gets us up. If we figure out how to put it right once and for all. Aye. See the sparkle of that fat, noisy bastard's got in his mitt. Oh, is it showing anything? That's what we have to get. I'll go left. You go right. Annie. Yeah. 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 Idiot. Jane. Duck. What? Oh. You got it. You. Bitch! Got you too, you fucking bastard! Ah! Here, what does we do? Don't know. Give it! Yeah, yeah, you! Stop! Stop, I say! Well, that was pocket full of shine. Here! This way! Throw it! Here! Don't you bloody drop it! No! Stop! Cease! Halt! Stop! Oh, a thumb feather in a scratched me itchy spot. <laughs> that gives me the stock goose flesh it do. Come on. Ladies, hold it. Oh, give you the rest. Oh. No more, my dear St. Jude. I would never have pegged you as a type to lower yourself to mingle with such as those. Why not? I lowered myself to mingle with such as you. Was it you who shot my minion? Well, I may have to return the favour. Best aim well. That horse pistol only has one chamber. Ah, but it is a large chamber. Order! I feel something. It's. It's. Mm, good job, and. Yeah. Jerry! Oh! No! Uh. Far worse than a simple fracture or broken bone, a crushing blow to a limb can maim or even lead to inevitable amputation. Worse still is such damage to the head or torso leading inexorably to death. You're still following me? We've still got no place to go. And you're marvellous. Hmm. Come on, then. We'll find something for you to do. Where are you going? Upstairs. Oh, shall we go through the areaway? What, well, there must be ruffles. You flat, silly cow. 
and I can't be bothered with mucking about in the kitchen tonight. You're flat. Mm. Oh, oh, now. Too tired. Jerry keeps me. Explain more tomorrow. He'll be in later and need some care. Oh. For that egg you laid on his head, Ninny. Right then. You know, well, we have this quest sort of thing. We stop them as do things like those back there. And, uh, if you ain't thought better of it by morning, maybe I'll tell you more. Now that you know how to find us, don't be a stranger. We got enough of them already. Tonight's episode, Bride of a Minotaur, was written by Julie Hoverson. In tonight's production, Jane was Beverly Poole, Gerald St. Jude was Gareth Bowley, Annie was Julie Hoverson, Freddie was Michael Coleman of Tales of the Extraordinary, Cedric was John Lingard, the Hierophant was Philemon Vanderbeck. The holder was J. Spider Isaacson, and the bobby was Joel Harvey. The in-between voices included Kate Waterus, Thomas Hudson, Rich Outfield and Big Anklevich of Dune Steve Audio Magazine, Glenn Hallstrom, Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard of Gypsy Audio, Femnomena, Russell Gold, Jack Kincaid, of Hodes Grimm at jack-kincaid.com slash enter the grim. Music for this episode included Brandenburg Concerto and the opening theme performed by Ken McLeod. All other music was courtesy of The Concertina Connection at www.concertinaconnection.com and is used with permission. The cover art for this episode was by Brett Coolstock. Sound effects were found on soundsnap.com and sonomic.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. The opening theme was by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. The opening credits featured Cole Hornaday, Renaud LaBeouf, and Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, and events in this story were fictitious or used in a fictitious manner and are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or undead. Questions? Comments? We would love to hear from you. Contact us at 19nocturne at live.com. That's 19nocturne. Or check out our website at www.19nocturneboulevard.com. Or join us in the 19 Nocturne Boulevard Forum over at audiodramatalk.com. We also have a WordPress site, 19nocturne.wordpress.com, that's spelled out 19. And we have a MySpace page, which is www.myspace.com slash 19 Boulevard. That's 19. This presentation is copyright 2010 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions.